2013 has arrived tonight from the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's a Big East college basketball matchup, and the UConn Huskies and Kevin Alley, fresh off a five-year contract extension, will take on Marquette, who will be without head coach Buzz Williams, who serves a one-game suspension as part of the school's self-imposed sanctions for recruiting rules violations. Can they win without him? UConn Marquette, coming up next on ESPNU. Welcome to ESPNU's presentation of college basketball as the Yukon Huskies take on the Marquette Golden Eagles. Hi everybody and welcome to Milwaukee and inside the Bradley Center. Good to have you with us at home 2013 is off to a great start for each and every one of you. Mike Corey alongside former Notre Dame and NBA great LaFonso Ellis and what a way to start the new year with UConn and Marquette looking forward to this one looking forward to getting started in the Big East tonight two of the best backcourts in the Big East looking forward to that matchup all right let's take a look at our one-on-one -on -one, the all-important coaching matchup here tonight in this one what do you think about that oh as I look at UConn UConn now has stability at the coaching position it'll help them with recruiting more importantly it'll help stabilize and galvanize this team tonight with Kevin Ollie with his five-year extension Brad Autry is going to do a tremendous job tonight in the absence of Buzz Williams but I'm interested to see from Marquette who steps up to be the leader on the floor I think it'll be Junior Cadogan we got two great guards in this one, Kadugan and also Shabazz and Napier as the starting lineups for the Yukon Huskies look like this. There's Napier who runs the show for these guys. 16 and a half points of all game. Daniels and Olander need to be huge inside for them tonight to try to compete with a big up front front court for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Kadugan, 95th career game tonight. Vander Blue is explosive. We'll keep an eye on him. And Chris O'Toole finally healthy again and leads this team in rebounding this season. Kevin Ollie just talked about the contract extension 40 years old five days ago good way to celebrate the birthday seven million dollars to the end of the 2017-18 season he wants to be here for a long time Brad Autry serving as the head coach for tonight for Marquette in place of Buzz Williams how about the X Factor here tonight, Lafonso? The crowd at the Bradley Center here in Milwaukee. <laughs> they, they're really rabid. They get into the basketball game. Let's see how UConn handles the pressure early. Underway tonight, the first Big East Conference game for both UConn and Marquette. Turnovers are going to be a huge key tonight. Marquette's turned that basketball over 36 times in the last two games. Can't do that against a UConn team who excels in transition. Marquette, so tough to beat here at home. Running a 16-game home court winning streak. And the jumper off the mark, Joe Juan Anderson on the rebound. And a three-point try by Vander Blue. That's off. Blue now takes it in and gets the runner. Partner, the hustle area of the game, the hustle points. The team that wins the hustle point game tonight will come away the victor. Marquette doing an outstanding job on the offensive glass so far. Daniels. Blocked. <laughs> Terrific job by the offensive rebounding team of Marquette. Vander Blue has really stepped up his game this year. He is awesome at attacking off the bounce. How about for UConn offensively, LaFonso? What are you looking for from them here tonight? Boatwright and Napier will control everything on the offensive end as Marquette is in man. Watch for Marquette to go to a little 2-3 zone to try to slow this UConn team down, especially with how deadly Napier can be from three. Speaking of which, Giffey knocks down a three. Niels Giffey, the junior from Germany, and it's 3-2 UConn. Kevin Holly called him the ultimate UConn player, brings a lot of energy and does anything to help his team win. Anderson. Short on the three, and it'll stay with the Golden Eagles. 
Both teams, Alfonso, averaging 70 points a ball game. UConn at 70.7, Marquette 70.4. And both have talked about trying to control the others in transition. <laughs> Tran <laughs> transition points, and U Marquette wants to keep UConn out of the painted area. I think Marquette has an advantage on the interior. I'd like to see Chris Otule early get some touches. A little shut off. Here's Lockett as he pulls up. Otule after the offensive rebound, but here come the Huskies. This is where they can be explosive. And what a drive by Ryan Boatwright. The foul call. Transition defense is a big key tonight for Marquette. UConn's terrific at pulling that basketball off the board after missing and pushing it in transition. Weren't able to get back and stop the basketball at the point of attack. That's how Ryan Boltwright was able to get in the gaps and get fouled. First foul of the game on Vander Blue for Marquette. And how about what Coach Kevin Ollie said about Boltwright today at shoot around to us? Basketball development, as he said, BD, and he's working on that a lot. He is, he, and you saw him when they were working on the ball screen action today. That's why it's great to have a point guard or a former point guard sometimes as your, as your head coach. He was working with both Boat Wright and Napier on how to effectively handle the ball screen action when Marquette blues it or forces it down to the baseline. One of two for Boat Wright. Two minutes in, UConn by a deuce. They got to get into the O2 later. There he is. But he fights for the ball. And we'll have a tie-up. We knew this was going to be scrappy coming in. Absolutely. And look who's on the floor in the midst of it. <laughs> Put your pass, Napier. And the matchup we talked about between him and Junior Kadugan. Both teams getting after it early here. UConn ball as Marquette is one for six so far from the field in this ball game. Well, that's the one thing that Shabazz Napier and Ryan Boatwright are terrific at. They really guard the ball well and make it difficult for you to get into the painted area. That's why I think it's going to be important for Marquette to get the basketball inside to Otuwe and Devontae Gardner when he comes into the game. Wow. It's a foul on UConn. I think they call that on Tyler Olander. And our first substitution of the night. Here comes Enesh Wolf, also from Germany, as Olander will take a seat. Enesh Wolf gave them some great minutes against Washington, came up with nine rebounds, and that's something that they desperately need. Someone who can play the painted area, rebound the basketball, and alter shots. He did that well against Washington. UConn at 10 and 2 on the season. Once again, Otule down low, unable to convert. UConn with that win against Washington, 61-53, and a travel on Napier. It's a terrific job by Trent Lockett, anticipating the direction that Napier is going to go in, beat him to the spot, and that's what created that turnover. Terrific job by Trent Lockett. And a little bit of early pressure here by UConn forces a timeout for Marquette. Marquette's going to have to be ready for that and allow their bigs, especially Otule, to give some pressure release in the backcourt. UConn on top 4-2 with 16.51 to play in the first. And college basketball is on ESPNU Wednesday night. Tomorrow at 6, Kentucky takes on Eastern Michigan. Then at 8, St. John's and Villanova do battle. Eastern Michigan, Kentucky at 6. Then St. John's, Villanova at 8. Wednesday on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. I tell you, we know that Kentucky's not the team that they were last year, partner, but I tell you what, those young cats looked pretty good against Louisville when the game was getting away. They were down 17 and they battled back to make it a close game. And we knew that they're not the team that they were last year, but in March, they'll be ready to play. Well, and how much pressure is on that team every single season oh. now, you know? And if they don't win at all, it's going to come on. Absolutely. But Coach Patino's put together a pretty good yep. team himself. I absolutely love Russ Smith. I love how he defends the basketball, and if you turn it over, he's one of the best in the Big East, maybe in the country, at getting to the rim. These two teams, Marquette picked to finish seventh in the Big East this year, UConn ninth. Watch how number 11 in blue hawks 
the basketball. Does a terrific job, one-on-one -on -one defense. Well, two line comes up high now with it. I, mean, I think another opportunity for Marquette is to get it in the band of blues. 6-4, taller than any of the guys from Connecticut. Rocket shot doesn't go, and the rebound by Anderson, and he was fouled. Marquette prides themselves on the hustle plays. The opportunity to get second and third shots have been big for them here early. First four minutes of this game. Edish Wolf call for the foul. And Juan Anderson from Oakland, California, who's battled injuries throughout his career. A couple of right shoulder injuries for him. He had surgery back in May, Lafonso. Yeah. Wasn't really getting that much time last year. Obviously, a big step up for him now in the sophomore season. Yeah, he's an in energy guy. When they get out in transition, he loves that trail three. Gives them great rebounding on the interior as well. This so may be the quiet quietest I've ever heard. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Marquette third in the Big East, averaging over 14,000 fans of all game here in the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Awesome atmosphere here tonight to start off the new year. Napier, what a play down the lane for two. He does such a great job when he hits the contact of taking that extra dribble, opening up the airspace to the rim. Inside to Gardner. Through traffic, and he will draw the foul. And he'll head to the free throw line when we come back. Kevin Ali signing a five-year contract extension. They love him already at UConn. We'll talk more about it when we come back. Two days after celebrating his 40th birthday, Kevin Ollie, the first year coach at UConn, given a new five year contract and a standing ovation as he entered the floor. And he says it's a five year contract, but I'm looking at it like I can be the coach here for 20 to 25 years. I am used to winning around here. That is why I came here. That is not going to stop. We will do it well and we will do it right. The point guard from 91 to 95, 13 years in the NBA, 11 different teams, 12 different cities, 15 different coaches. I mean, come on. Yeah, I tell you what, I wanted to watch him in practice today and see his command over his team. I love how all 14 guys are looking him directly in his eyes as he's teaching. I was impressed with his command this morning. The basketball knowledge that this guy must have mm -hmm. from all that experience, oh, wow. Off the charts with some of the coaches that he's played for. High energy guy. We came in to shoot around. He came right up to us. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Happy New Year. It was great. Made us feel at home, mm -hmm. even while all of us on the road. Devontae Gardner. Yeah. He comes off the bench, LaFonso, but he obviously could be a starter. The 6'8 junior from Southern Virginia. A big power guy for them inside. Averages 20 minutes per game, but leads the team in free throw attempts. Does an outstanding job in the low post market playing this zone here and they're gonna have to get that basketball into the free throw line area or the short corners to try to create some offense a ball screen will allow them to get into the painted area off dribble penetration as well Napier trying to force it inside it's knocked away and taken away by the Gold Eagles didn't have proper spacing on the dribble penetration that's what created that turnover Blue. And a foul as Devontae Gardner hit the deck. The whenever you're on the dribble penetration, you want your teammates to be 12 to 15 feet away, too tight on the dribble penetration. Too many defenders in the area, too many hands creating that turnover. Nice job by Marquette closing down the gap. Now the freshman Philip Nolan, who is from Milwaukee, from Riverside University High, had to take a seat as he picked up his second personal foul for UConn. Five minutes gone by, first half. Gardner and Marquette has the lead. 
We talked about Junior Kadugan's ability to break down the defense, and once he gets in that painted area, he's such a terrific decision maker. Further on the way, it's time by Boatwright, as go, and picked up by Trent Lockett. Talked to the coaching staff from Marquette today. They said they wanted to make this a half court basketball game if they could continue to do it. Well, there's Kadugan in the inside. We talked about his leadership out there on the floor in Buzz Williams' absence. He's really impacted this game with his dribble penetration here early. And Napier getting blue up into the air for the foul. Junior Kadugan recognizing they need his leadership out there on the floor to create some offense. His ability to put it on the deck. Look how patient he can be inside. And he never gives up on the play. Always making the hustle plays, the right plays, the winning plays for Marquette. Good job by Junior Kadugan. Kadugan goes out. So does Vander Blue, who picked up his second personal foul. Jamil Wilson is in. Todd Mayo is in. A sophomore, only his third game as he was ineligible for the first semester. Derek Wilson is also checked in for the Golden Eagles. Derek Williams does a terrific job. Or Derek Wilson, rather, does a great job for them at the point guard position. Really controls the tempo. And rarely turns the basketball over. Runs the floor well for them offensively. So this is where Tyler Owen, they miss his presence in the game because he can make that 15 to 17 foot jump shot at the free throw line area. Stifling defense by Marquette. Napier. Not that time. Beautiful curl by Lockett. Comes Colt right. Good feed inside, basket and a foul for DeAndre Daniels. I love how Ryan Boatwright changes speeds. And just when you think he's going to reverse the basketball, how about the vision to be able to see him under the basket and the delivery? Great read by Ryan Boatwright. He pulls up his dribble, and you think a guy at his size at six feet tall, I think that's generous, by the way, yeah. wouldn't be able to see over the top, but DeAndre Daniels gave a nice target. Beautiful delivery underneath. Trent Lockett called for the foul for Marquette. And Daniels caps off the three-point play to tie it at nine. I really like DeAndre Daniels. I love his ability to be able to post up inside, but he can score outside as well. He's a difficult mismatch for many teams. Had four stitches in his chin and one in his lip after taking a fall in that last game in the win over Washington at home. Talk about toughness. That's a tough angle to try to make that pass. Well, they want to get it to Gardner again. Shot clock's at seven. Wilson on a tough step back and a good box out by UConn. It's also a great challenge by Ryan Boatwright to take away that easy look. <laughs> Too quick in the possession there for Giffine. I, I would say so. You want to get that basketball moving around the horn, but they're also trying to get quicker, good shots up against that 2 3 zone before that 2 3 zone can set. Gardner. Up and under, getting inside of Enesh Wolf. Gorgeous footwork underneath by Devonte Gardner. You would think a guy that size wouldn't be as nimble under the basket, but what makes him so good offensively and so dangerous in the post is he's so patient. He's big, he feels you, and if you allow him to feel your body, he spins quickly off of your body into an opening as he did there on the baseline. Athleticism that you said that you had that when you were getting in there. You know, that's how you were able to take advantage of guys, right? I don't know. He's much better than I down there. I mean, again, his, his his ability to score down there, uncanny. A guy who plays 20 minutes a game, but in, effective in those 20 minutes. But Buzz Williams told me last year that is as he plays over 20 minutes, his efficiency goes down. So 20 minutes is the number for him. Well, Fonso, how about UConn now with two front court players with two fouls, Nolan and Wolf? They're not as deep as Marquette. They, they're not, and we said Marquette's 
advantage was on the interior, and especially when Devontae Gardner's in the game because he's their number one low post threat, and he's really hurt them on the interior. Daniels off on the three, and here comes Jake Thomas. Nice read. Wilson rejected inside by Daniels, but the Golden Eagles get a pick. And now foul going the other way. Jamil Wilson called for it. New Year's Day in Milwaukee, Wisconsin from the Bradley Center. First Big East Conference game for UConn and Marquette. Alabama, Penn State quarterback Christian Hackenberg should be a fun game coming up in a couple of days. Marquette by two here early in Milwaukee. Well, what jumps off the page is Marquette has 16 field goal attempts to UConn's eight. Their ability to offensive rebound the basketball has impacted this game here early. Here foul on Jamil Wilson. Marquette Marquette second. Zero, Wilson, second personal foul. Fifth, So Juan Anderson back in. Daniels knocks it down again. DeAndre Daniels really improved his scoring and he looks the score, which is something that Kevin Ollie wants from him in the season. Side, the big guy, the 6'8 junior, puts it in the tie or put Marquette on top. Defensively, you have to make sure you jump on the high side so they're not making that easy entry from the top. Napier draws another foul and another good head fake, this time from beyond three point land. Devontae Gardner is outstanding at sealing you on the interior, and he has such great feet, again, for his size, the little drop step on the interior and the strength to get it up on the glass with contact. He does a fantastic job on the interior for Marquette. Anderson, the foul, 16 fouls now on Marquette. Marquette's really want to slow UConn's offensive attack down, and they instituted this 2-3 zone and this kept them from getting easy baskets early. And how about Daniels, who already has a team-high five points, heading back to the free-throw line as he was fouled by Gardner. Only two points as a freshman coming to this season, averaging 10. Really worked on his game and his footwork. He wanted to improve his defensive ability to guard the basketball. DeAndre Daniels spending some time in the weight room as well. Seven now for Daniels, rest of the team with six. Full court pressure here just to slow the basketball down and to force them not to be able to get into their third options offensively. I was wondering if they would go to that 2 3 zone because some teams have had some really good success against this Marquette team because they don't shoot the basketball well from the perimeter. Gardner with eight points off the bench for the Golden Eagles and they turn it over. Got to push here before that 2 3 gets set up. Junior Kadugan. That counts, and he was fouled by RJ Evans. One of the best times to attack is when you get in transition. It's before the defense set. Didn't do a good job at all, RJ Evans, of getting turned around and turning the basketball. Junior Kadugan reading it perfectly and attacking, getting into his body. And this is an area of his game where he's really improved. A guy who shot in the 60s, 66%, this year shooting about 81% from the line. I asked him what attributed to, to that uh, when they were warming up here before the game. He said it's just concentration and focus for him. 
Giants. Chris Otule back in for Marquette and a much deserved rest for Devontae Gardner. is fouled by Anderson. So that is going to be a one and one now coming up here for UConn. And that's Brad Autry who is the head coach for tonight as Buzz Williams suspended for one game. Self-imposed suspension by Marquette recruiting rules violations. Can't have any contact with the team for right. two days. Mm -hmm. It just misses one game. Brad Osher told us earlier that he wanted to go long in the shoot around today to make sure that they kept the principle simple coming into the game today. Oh. Look at the take the contact and put it in. He's got seven. Timeout, UConn. The one thing UConn worked on today was getting back and taking away that initial thrust. That's two baskets in a row now where Marquette's been able to get out in transition. People jogging down the floor, not getting in front of the basketball. Kevin Ali is upset about that. They went through it today in practice. And here's a statement from Buzz Williams, the fifth-year head coach for Marquette. I was deeply saddened to learn of an error in judgment of one of my assistants and closest friends. I take personal responsibility for what happens in this program and realize we must be role models to both our team and the entire university. Our commitment has always been and will always be to operate this program at the highest level of integrity in the Marquette and Jesuit tradition. I just love the personal responsibility. I mean, recognizing that it's on his watch and he would take the personal responsibility of sitting out says a lot about Buzz Williams and his character. Hold right now. Picks it out. Calhoun misses the three. That 2 3 zone that Marquette was playing early has really taken UConn out of their rhythm offensively. Junior Cadugan's on a five point run himself for Marquette to go up five. Lock it off on the three. to the free throw line as he was fouled. What a length of the floor pass that time by Napier. Well, they do a terrific job of pitching the basketball ahead, allowing the wing player in transition to attack one-on-one. -on -one. And that's one of the things that I think Shabazz Napier does extremely well. Not afraid to give it up to allow his guys to attack one-on-one -on -one in transition. Terrific read there. Omar Calhoun's wishing he can make that, that basket. I've really enjoyed watching him as well. He can play the two or the three, has struggled defensively, but he's getting better. At 18, he's averaging 18 points over the last three games. Really doing a great job, the four-star prospect. And no relation to former UConn coach Jim Calhoun. New York State Gatorade Player of the Year. Pretty solid start to his freshman year. And probably they've needed that third guy, and over the last three games, Omar Calhoun has answered the bell. fouled on his way to the basket. It's Todd Mayo playing in just his third game of the season right now for Marquette. And you see the four players in double figures in scoring so far for UConn this season. Shabazz Napier and Ryan Boatwright how about 46 percent of this team's offense and so if you want to beat this team you got to get them under control early and so far in this game Marquette's done a terrific job with the two of them they've really missed OJ Mayo he was academically ineligible last semester is just coming back this is his third game but a guy who can give them some instant offense off the bench athletic explosive score 
The top two guys you just talked about for UConn right now tonight with only three points combined. Daniels. Crowd liking the effort on defense. And they get a strip. Speaking of which, Napier, good job to get back on D to knock it away from Mayo. Really impressive job not giving up on that play. Marquette Ball when we come back. Happy New Year, everybody. Marquette on top by four. The Big East opener for both schools tonight here in Milwaukee. How about the play of Junior Cadugan tonight so far for Marquette? In the absence of Coach Buzz Williams, they needed Junior Cadugan to really take, take a step and lead this club. He's put this club on his shoulders trying to get ah! the easy baskets. His ability to attack the paint tonight has been the difference in this game for Marquette. Junior Cadugan doing an exceptional job in transition. Coming off a 16-point effort in the last game of the win over NC Central. Seven already tonight. And a senior from Ontario. Buzz Williams refers to him as his son. Yes. <laughs> and so, obviously, when the dad is out of the home, the son has to step up and take his responsibility. Junior Kadugan has done that tonight. UConn's in that 2-3 zone. game against LSU Marquette was up 21 points LSU went to that zone got some turnovers some easy baskets tied the game up inside good time down low and that's Steve Taylor Jr. on the basket he's a really skilled big they're excited about his future talk about that LSU game there Lafonso Marquette ended up winning by just four 84 to 80 well, teams think that's the secret formula. Playing zone and forcing them to make jump shots. Timeout, UConn, as Ryan Boatwright was caught in the double team. As we go inside the play here, when you're playing against a 2 3 zone, there's several ways to beat it. But if you can get to that big east sign and then think attack, a lot of players catch it there and they become conservative, looking to move the basketball. You should first look to score, look to the short corner, or look for the skip pass. That's an excellent job against the 2 3 zone. So Brad Autry and company now with a six-point advantage in this first half. Largest lead of the night for Marquette. It's just six. Napier taking matters into his own hands. Turned down the ball screen and exploded through the gap to the left. The rotation was late coming over from Marquette. They got to get Shabazz Napier going here in the first half if they expect to get back in this game. Four points for him. Marquette just not getting the rolls tonight from their outside shots. He doesn't Good miss too many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't miss too many of those. Oh! Lock it, and he'll head to the free throw line. Giffey called for the foul. Let's go back to the Shabazz Napier basket. He does a great job of reading where the defender is, the on-ball defender. And if you jump low, he'll attack on the bottom side. Again, Marquette late coming over to help. Shabazz Napier is one of the best at turning down that ball screen and attacking the gap. Evans returns to the UConn lineup. A graduate student from Salem, Connecticut. Calhoun to the bench. How about Trent Lockett? <laughs> Graduating in three years, 21 credit hours per semester. <laughs> that kid must be organized. Yeah, I was going to say. The senior from Golden Valley, Minnesota, 
The transfer from Arizona State had a waiver, so it allowed him to play right away this year. Back to a feed to Napier. Couldn't convert. Dangerous pass, but can do get for three, and it's no good. That's Boltwright. Beautiful stop and pop and transition. No one stepped up to take the basketball. Perfect decision by not going too deep. First field goal for Boltwright tonight for UConn, and they are within three. With Devontae Gardner back in the game, you got to get him some touches on the interior. He really hurt UConn earlier in this first half. He's up by the three-point line right now, three-point line. There he goes. Rebound by Giffey. It was good defense by Olander inside. Evans, and it'll be a blocking foul. Crowd not happy. Todd Mayo. R.J. Evans, another graduate transfer, this time from Holy Cross. He excels off the bounce, wide body, so he can absorb contact and still get the basketball up on the rim. He's given him some great leadership as well. He referred to him as the old man of the group. You know, Kevin Ollie, the head coach for UConn, said it's a breath of fresh air for him. His experience, guys look up to him. With a team that doesn't have a lot of older guys yeah. and experience, they could yeah. use a guy like him. Absolutely. It was actually his dream to come and play for UConn for Coach Calhoun, but Coach Calhoun decided to take another player who's just okay with Kimba Walker. Let's not forget UConn with two players, Jeremy Lamb and Andre Drummond to the NBA, yeah. that they have to try to fill the void uh, I think from them. The, I think the big one partner is Alex Oriaki having transferred to Missouri. Can you imagine him on this team? He's exactly what they need down in the low post. Oh, nice rebound by Giffey. Napier, and that'll be a goal attempt. The outside shooting mm -hmm. by both teams right now not happening. Marquette coming in 32% from three-point land. It hasn't been working for them. And it has not, but their ability to get out in transition, to get easy baskets, exceptional. Shabazz Napier does a fantastic job, but what creates those opportunities, partner, is they're terrific at passing the basketball ahead. A lot of guys bounce the basketball too much. Basketball travels faster than the defenders. Excellent job here in the first half by UConn. Marquette's six-point lead is down to one. Gardner and fouled by Evans. As we get in the Big East Conference play for teams that play zone, I call the Big East sign in the paint the sweet spot. If you can get it in that area via pass, dribble penetration, some beautiful things open up. That was a great pass underneath to Demonte Gardner. Five for five tonight at the free throw line comes in at 81 percent on the season so that's a big plus for them as we'll sub out Juan Anderson Steve Taylor jr. back in he missed eight games late in the season last year with a strained left knee you can see him still wearing that little knee sleeve to, for protection Marquette as a team tonight 10 of 13 from the foul line. Evans against the double team, not a high percentage play. They've missed a lot. They've left a lot of points in that painted area. They've gotten several offensive rebounds, but have not been able to connect on close range. Oh, right. Pulls up and drains it. 
Got into the gap, the hesitation, the center never came up. That's another great read by Ryan Boatwright as he dribbles into the painted area. Jake Thomas, the junior, has it now. I would have liked to have seen Devontae Gardner give it up and then give a strong repost to get lower position. Kadugan, five to shoot, lock it for three. They cannot hit from the outside tonight so far. Another offensive rebound. This time, Gardner puts it in. Second chance opportunities have been good for Marquette in the first half. Game high, 12 points for Gardner. I'll tell you, this tempo really favors Marquette. They want it to slow down, especially the high octane backcourt of UConn. They've been successful with it so far. Gardner pushed out of the post. Dugan thought about the three, now has six to shoot. And partially rejected by Olander and good outlet. This is where UConn has to attack to get buckets. Napier for three, hits it. And we are tied at 26. UConn's back in that 2-3 zone. Marquette's been successful when they've been able to get into the Big East area off the dribble. And a miss on the three, the offensive board, Steve Taylor Jr. Oh! The basket will count, and he was fouled. Devontae Gardner not only scores for this team, but he does a terrific job of coming over and block shots. Devontae Gardner giving it to UConn in the first half. And LaFonso. All right, thanks very much. All right, thanks very much here in UConn and Marquette in this first Big East Conference game of the season. Who will start 2013 with the win? Right now, Shabazz Napier with nine points for UConn to lead the way, and big Devontae Gardner has 12 to lead Marquette. Shabazz Napier has been sensational here in the first half. I love how poised and patient he's been because when they went into that 2-3 zone, Marquette, sometimes you get a little nervous, out of character, and you just start casting shots. Four of six from the floor. He's done a terrific job in the first half. Taylor was fouled before the timeout. Doesn't convert the three-point play as we approach the one-minute mark to go here in this first half. Partner Marquette is 8 of 19 in the painted area. You got to convert those. They have 10 offensive rebounds, but haven't been able to convert them into the baskets. It's going to be like a 10 plus point advantage if they were able to hit some of those easy ones. Napier now. Shot clock at 5. Just does an amazing job of creating. Here's what you talked about for Marquette tonight. Look at that. 10 offensive rebounds, 16 points in the paint, but the field goal percentage. <laughs> Credit UConn yeah. on many of them. They're doing a great job of challenging, but that's where you have to gather that basketball inside, get your power base, go up strong, and either get fouled or make the basket or both. Marquette's not done a very good job in that category. Fouls on Todd Mayo. Second. I'll tell you, Coach Kevin Alley has to be excited about where his crew is. They've given up 10 offensive rebounds, 16 to 8 points in the paint. Yet Napier has an opportunity to tie the game up on the road. I love the toughness of this UConn team. Oh. 
16 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock here in this first half. So Marquette's been able to reverse the ball and get to the blue area off the bounce. They've been able to create some pretty good offense against this 2-3 zone. I'd like to see them go to it here with 31 seconds to go. Into the foul line. Six for him. It's really giving them some nice offensive production. It helps to have a score catching the basketball at the free throw line area against the zone. Boat right. Will they get something up? Napier floats it, and that'll be the end of the first half. Now Marquette will take a three-point lead into the locker room as Devontae Gardner has been leading the way with 12. He's been fantastic down in the low box. A guy averaging 13 points a game. He's been exceptional in the pivot. Halftime from the Bradley Center. Let's send it to Matt Schick and college football analyst Dan Hawkins for the sport. here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. ESPN College Basketball continues from inside the Bradley Center, where Marquette leads UConn by three. I'm here with the other Fonz, Mike Corey and Lafonso Ellis. Uh, Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year to you, friend. Pretty good game here in the first half. Oh, it's been exceptional. Defense, defensively, both teams have been rock solid. What's really hurt UConn is they've given up 10 offensive rebounds, but Marquette hasn't been able to convert. Devontae Gardner has been a beast inside with 12 points on the interior. Junior Kandugan has really stepped up and been the leader for this team offensively. Here are the stats of the first half. The outside shooting has been a little bit off for Marquette. They're over from the three-point line. You see some of the offensive rebounds, 10-1 to there, but they haven't been able to convert some easy ones in the interior. Yeah, it's been the bench that's dominated this game. 19 of the 30 points have come from the bench. Of course, 12 of those coming from Devontae Gardner. Their bench averages 45% of their total offense. It's amazing, 31.3 a ball game, 12th in the nation by Marquette's bench. Second half is underway. And Kadugan right to the hole for two you just talked about. His ability to turn the corner and take that extra dribble and take contact and finish is really amazing. Junior Kadugan picking up where he left off. Some nice paint touches in the first half with seven points. Starts out the second half being aggressive, getting into the painted area. His ability to protect the basketball with his inside shoulder and get it up on the glass. Truly remarkable for a kid his size. Got a lot of fouls called in the first half. 21 total. First of the second goes on Juan Anderson. His third from Marquette. UConn on a four-game winning streak. Marquette on a 16-game home court winning streak. Really nice challenge by Trent Lockett. And Blue down the lane, and he is fouled. Vander Blue, who had a sit for most of that first half of foul trouble, back in in a big way. Well, Ryan Boatwright took a challenge three from the left corner. Good job by Trent Lockett. That ball was short. Usually a long shot leads to a long rebound and a bust out. Terrific job by Marquette getting in transition. Vander Blue is exceptional in the open floor. Second foul on Niels Giffard. Tell you, I know Actually, Buzz, probably, uh, on Napier. No worries. I know Buzz Williams is at home watching this game. He's got to be pleased with how his guys have attacked the paint, but frustrated with the lack of finishes around the basket. We saw a shot there of Brad Autry and Jerry Wainwright for Marquette. There's Kevin Ollie for UConn. Brad Autry, the head coach for tonight. The self-imposed suspension by Marquette for head coach Buzz Williams. Recruiting rules violation. He'll be back. Only one game suspension. Oh. 
Vanderbilt has really raised his level of his game this year. I think he could turn into one of those go-to guys for Marquette. He's improved his shooting. He's shooting it well from the three-point line, and he can attack the basket with the best of them. Napier kicks to Calhoun and in and out on the three. Sign for Wilson. Oh, oh, and out with a jumper. So he shoots that basketball on the way down, but if you're a good shooter and you're taking a lot of those shots, it really doesn't matter because it's a matter of follow through and feel and follow through. Vander Blue doing a good job for Marquette. Alfonso, it's an eight point lead, the largest of the night right now for Marquette. They've done a good job of controlling tempo and keeping this guy, number 13, out of the paint. See so if you notice, the last three or four possessions have all been deep jump shots. And that's exactly playing into Marquette's hands. Ochoa, look out, the left-handed turnaround. And now UConn needs a timeout. Ten-point Golden Eagles advantage. Chris O'Toole doing a great job of getting big underneath, but it starts with this guy, Vander Blue, doing an outstanding job. Marquette on a 7 and 0 run. Capped by this guy, Chris O'Toole. Ten point advantage for Marquette. Solid start to the second half for them. Three point lead up to 10 now, just about two minutes in. Buzz Williams, fifth season here at Marquette. Here's what he did in the first four seasons, just back-to-back -back Sweet 16 <laughs> appearances, <all>. you know? <laughs> Outstanding, Coach. I love the way he runs his practices, and he has to be pleased with the output from his team tonight. Brad Autry doing a great job. Jerry Wainwright was doing good in the practice here early, so it must please the coach to lead the game and have his coaches be able to take over and do well. Buzz Williams out tonight with a one-game suspension, a recruiting rules violation, and no further action will be taken by the NCAA or anything like that. So he's missing two days with no contact with the team. Just one game here tonight, the Big East opener, and he will return. And so far, Marquette doing okay without him as Brad Autry serving as the head coach for tonight. Napier defeated Simon Daniels for two. They get all of that movement and get the weak side peeking over at the basketball, leaving an open lane for DeAndre Daniels to slip in. Good find over the top. And before the three from Lockett, it's an offensive foul down low underneath on Marquette. Would have been their first main three of the night. Watch how the ball moves around the horn. All five guys touch it, and then all of a sudden it swings to the strong side, and now everyone's lost their players. DeAndre Daniels shows a hand underneath. Beautiful delivery underneath by Shabazz Napier. Third foul on Jamil Wilson from Marquette, and that three-pointer going down for Boatwright. And the lead has been cut in half. Well, they're being aggressive right now. You drop your hands on Boatwright, he will make you pay. He's so aggressive, always looking to score. That's something that Marquette hasn't done so far in this second half. They've been really attuned defensively. Boatwright has eight. UConn three of ten from three-point range. Just blew those down and hit the scooping right-handed runner is good. The hesitation, the explosion, and the little levitation to get to the rim. Beautiful play by Vander Blue. Nice. All right, wow, what a feed. There's Tyler Olander, the recipient of that one. Doing a great job, weak side, recognizing that his defender went over the help, and that was a good read by Boatwright underneath to pass it inside to Olander. Second half, four minutes old. Dugan is fouled by Boatwright. And a timeout here in Milwaukee. Vander Blue doing a great job coming off those bow screens, exerting himself offensively. But on the other side, this little guy, beautiful pass underneath the Olander. Going to Alabama.
Alabama. Penn State quarterback Christian Hackenberg and Robert Condici, the big defensive end. Where will he go? It's going to be fun. So check it out this week. Scores from today in college football. Get a chance to check any of these games out, Lafonso, or no, what? I was over here with you all day. Oh, I thought you were taking a nap earlier. <laughs> well, in between, in between the shoot arounds. Yeah, no, didn't get a chance to see it today, but that Wisconsin score was interesting. I was wondering if that was going to impact the number of fans that showed up at our right. game, but we found out this afternoon that Marquette fans are not Wisconsin fans and vice versa. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's some scores. Northwestern with a win earlier today in South Carolina over Michigan. You know what's interesting about that, partner? How can a top 10 team play against an unranked team yeah. in a bowl game? We need a whole studio show for that <laughs> one, my friend. Yeah. I was just wondering. Sorry. Yeah. First Big East Conference game for both UConn and Marquette here tonight from the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mike Corey and LaFonso Ellis. Eight to shoot Napier. He got bailed out. He'll stay with the Huskies. Hey, partner, how about Boatwright? He has three field goals made, four assists. He's had a hand in seven of their 12 field goals. That's terrific production by number 11 in blue. Oh, what a play. Napier almost had it, but picked up by Wolf, and he'll put it in. Denise Wolf has given them some big minutes, especially in their last game against Washington. Nine rebounds, and they certainly need someone to step up and control the defensive board. First field goal for Wolf for UConn. Four point Marquette advantage. Derek Wilson got it knocked away by Napier and a steal. Look at the ball control by this guy. How about the five? Underneath <laughs> for DeAndre Daniels and Napier has seen everything. This is one thing I love about him. You can't speed him up. He continues to control the basketball with vision. Exceptional job by Napier. Shabazz Napier, if your back is to the out-of-bounds man, terrific read there. Didn't finish it, but Ednish Wolf in the right place at the right time. How about the ball control and the vision, keeping his eyes up and finding his teammate DeAndre Daniels underneath. Oh! Basket was fouled the other way by Vander Blue, and that'll stop a little UConn run at 11-2. Panda Blue's really been asserting himself offensively for this team. Only one bucket in the first half, three here in the second half. That was a great read underneath, found the little gap, and that's the one thing I love about him. He attacks the basket physically, and if you bump him, he still has the strength to get it up and in. Marquette gone from last year. Jay Crowder, the Big East player of the year. <laughs> Darius Johnson owed him. The question was who was going to step yeah. up for Marquette this season. Vander Blue has been, he's been really steady. He's improved his three-point shooting. He's been able to make big baskets when they need him. I think another guy that can step up and be, oh, nice move by Ennis Wolf. Quick move to the basket. I think Todd Mayo can also be a guy, once he gets his legs under him and gets back comfortable offensively, he's going to be another weapon for them on the floor. Well, there he is, going into traffic, lost it, and Gardner draws the foul. Third on Enish Wolf. Devontae Gardner is one of those guys like Jack Cooley from Notre Dame. Those guys take up so much space on the interior on both the defensive and the offensive side, and they're always in proper position to come up with loose balls and offensive rebounds. Uncanny the nose that they have for the basketball. Now, what you gotta like about this guy, what makes him so tough is his free throw shooting. He's seven for seven here tonight. And that's, that bodes well when you're in a tight game down the stretch because now you don't have to take your poor free throw shooting big man out of the game and compromise your rebounding. Oh, Tule checks back in for Gardner. I love their front line. Devontae Gardner and Chris O'Toole really do a nice job. Hey. And there he is, the block by O'Toole on Napier. Oh, and another block the other way. <laughs> 
one by Daniels. Partner, I thought that was all ball. Wow. We'll call him for the foul, the body. That'll be his second. Wow. How about the reaction by Ochule? And then they're off to the races in yellow. Oh, oh, I thought that was a good block there, partner. That's on the glass. That should be going the other way. Excellent reaction by DeAndre Daniels. Well, you see Kevin Ollie's reaction. He's probably thinking the same thing there. Five-point Marquette lead. College basketball continuing tomorrow on ESPNU. At 6, Kentucky taking on Eastern Michigan. Then at 8, St. John's and Villanova. All coming your way Wednesday on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. DeAndre Daniels still working on that. He took a spill, hit his chin against Washington, and still recovering from that blow. Well, he has blood on him here right now, so that's why he's over on the sideline. They're attending to him. Yeah, it didn't look like a pretty good block by Daniels. Instead, Wilson will have free throws for Marquette. Derek Williams, Derek Wilson rather, does a lot of good things for this team. He's a driver, tough defender, really moves his feet well. Is considered the best on-ball defender on this Marquette team. Wilson one for two. Here's Goodbye down the lane. Cleaned up by Wolf for the basket. He's given them some terrific production in the second half off the bench. Wolf shooting 62% for the field on the season. Yeah. Dick Shannon yeah. for Steve Taylor Jr. I love big to big interior passing. That was beautiful. Nice. Bone right. Oh, blowing it as well for the dunk. Not seen that one in a while. He hung on the rim a little too long. What a beautiful pass underneath. Just put that one in. Let it go, big fella. That's the call. Hanging on the rim that time. Wasn't able to put home the dunk. Beautiful. Nice job inside by Wolf. And that's what you have to be able to do, partner. When you make a poor play on one end, you have to forget about that one and play the next play. Really nice maturity by Yanish Wolf. Good block, though. He was a little lucky. He was kind of leaning in over that left hand. It's a good call. He's going to call for a foul. That three sent hand to the face thing, and that's going to be his fourth. Yeah, he and O'Toole going at him a little bit, and you just can't do that in front of the ref. I mean, he's giving them some really good minutes. You have to understand your value to the team. And he's been doing such a terrific job for him in his play, and they can't afford to have him on the bench. At seven foot one, he provides another option for them on the interior. So Tyler Olander is checked back in. And as soon as he comes in, he's called for the foul. So free throws coming up here from Marquette. North, uh, excuse me, UConn, the best free throw shooting team in the Big East at 74% coming into the game, and Marquette not that far behind at 72.5, <laughs> and they've had a lot of opportunities here tonight. Lafonso, 24th shot at the line here for them. I think when you think about UConn's team and knowing that they don't really have a front line and knowing that they're in the in the leaders in the Big East and free throws attempt, a free throw attempt is ex exceptional. But you think about this Marquette team with Gardner in the interior, his ability to get to the line. Junior Kadugan is exceptional. He's the second leader in free throw attempts on this Marquette team. So terrific balance by the Marquette Golden Eagles. Bolt right gets to the high post to Olander. Nice. Evans on the mess. 
RJ Evans rushed that shot underneath. He should have used his left hand. Wilson trains the mid-range jumper. Jamil Wilson, the junior. And it's back to a 10-point Marquette advantage, tying their largest of the night. that 2-3 zone and then everything became a jump shot. UConn's got to continue to attack and get in the gaps. Marquette trying to add on to a 9-2 and This is the time for them to score before that 2-3 zone gets set. Nice lead. And Giffey will draw the foul. He'll shoot when we come back. When we return, remembering Rick Majerus, who's done so much for college basketball, coming back to Milwaukee right after this. Marquette remembering Rick Majerus, the decal on their jerseys throughout this season, a former assistant to Al McGuire and a head coach here at Marquette from 1983 to 86, and did so much for college basketball. What comes to your mind when you think of Rick Majerus? Well, Rick Majerus recruited me when he was here at Marquette, and of course I decided to go to Notre Dame, and so we had been disconnected for a long time, but when I began to work for ESPN four years ago, start doing some of his games over at St. Louis. And what I loved about Rick Majerus is he loves talking about the game. He loves teaching the game. And you don't hear a negative story anywhere. Everyone he touches has some kind of Rick Majerus story. And he was really kind to me, giving me the access that I needed to call this game, but also remembering the days that he'd drive down to East St. Louis to see me play. Well, they certainly remember him here at Marquette. No doubt about that. You know, when that stuff happens, man, it just seems so surreal, you know? You, you, you're with him one day, and then the next day you're reading about him. But the contribution that he made to this game, and at the pro level as well, because when he left here at Marquette, he was in the NBA for a few years before he went to Ball State. Tremendous coach, an even better person. Cadugan working down the Right back is Boatwright. He has been doing a lot of things well in this game tonight for UConn. Partner, if UConn wants to get back in this game, they can't allow Marquette to continue to get second possessions. They have to get out in transition and look for early opportunities as they did on that possession. Now key was that basket. And really, that thunderous dunk ignited the crowd, and now this will help UConn's cause an offensive foul. Dribble penetration. Thought UConn responded well to try to alter the shot, but then all of a sudden you don't come up with that possession, and it leads to a wide open dunk by Chris Otule. Again, if they want to get back in this game, they got to get some stops, but not so much as get stops. They got to come up with those loose balls, those 50 50 balls, and get out in transition looking for some easy opportunities before Marquette can get this 2 3 zone set. We saw the note four fouls on Wilson. Here's Napier for three. Yes. And Shabazz Napier trades a big time three for UConn. The Marquette is down, lead is down to five. Great job by Ryan Bro Boatwright recognizing where he was as the ball was moving to the strong side. Did a little backfield to the wing area and was able to knock down that three from the wing. Kadugan splits the beam and gets it to go. How clever is he with the basketball? Well, it's starting to heat up here now as Boatwright beats Goodbye's on the deck, and there's going to be a timeout. He got the timeout called for UConn to hold on to the possession. 
but that will leave them with just one remaining in this ball game. Junior Cadugan so under control with the basketball. Watch how he comes off, and if you come up to help, he goes back inside, but the big, I believe that was Neil, Tyler, Tyler Olander, never came up to give a good hedge, and that created that angle for him to burst through the gap. Junior Cadugan does a terrific job of reading off ball screens. Partner, this is where it hurts UConn not having a guy that they can consistently throw it to in the low post area to get them some baskets down low. They depend so heavily on Boltwright and Napier to get into the gaps to be able to get them some points in the painted area. That's a great point. And with Inish Wolf, Inish Wolf with the foul trouble, four fouls. It's hurting UConn right now in the interior. We have Niels Giffey and Tyler Olander as the bigs in right now. Both right. Yeah, we're down pulled home by Juan Anderson for Marquette. He doesn't miss very many of those. The Dugan found Anderson inside and he was fouled. That's one of the few times that you'll see Ryan Boatwright with his hands down against an offensive player with the basketball. And because his hands were down, Kadugan could see him underneath and delivered a nice pass underneath to Juan Anderson. One and one now for Juan Anderson. And he has 16 in this ball game. Right at his average, averaging 16.5 a game for UConn. On the other side, Marquette over 10 in three-point lane. Does it change here? No. And that's what you want if you UConn. You want Marquette taking hey. open shots from the perimeter. Well, no doubt. I mean, they have the inside advantage, and they're going for outside three-pointers. Absolutely. Otule with his first foul for Marquette. That's a terrific read by Napier. He saw that the defender jumped high on his right side, a little crossover dribble to create the gap, and he has a beautiful jump shot. He kicks his foot a little bit when he shoots that three, but he's in rhythm with his shoulder squared to the basket. I love watching this young guy play. Has he come out here tonight? I don't think he's been on the bench at all. Yeah, they can't afford to. <laughs> yeah. He averages 35.6 minutes a game. Because when you look at the lineup that's in right now, R.J. Evans, number 12 in blue, is not a perimeter shooter. He's a three, but he's not a perimeter shooter. And because Marquette's been playing the zone, they need as many shooters on the floor as possible. So Boatwright and Napier have had to play extended minutes. When you see the difference in depth, for these two teams, as you just saw Marquette put in three yellow jerseys in Trent Lockett, Steve Taylor Jr., and Devontae Gardner. No subs for UConn. I think Napier got maybe a minute of rest here tonight. That's it, less than a minute. <laughs> UConn back in that 2-3 zone, trying to keep Marquette out of the painted area. Kadugan doesn't use a screen, but gets to the tiller, and he is fouled. Really good squeeze play defensively by UConn, but again, not coming up with that loose ball to be able to get out in transition. That's two possessions now in the last three minutes that they've not been able to come up with.
Tell your partner, Marquette is really excited about Steve Taylor. Skilled big. Really, they think he's going to be really good. He's really good with his back to the basket. He's got a good shot. And as you can see, even as a freshman, has a really nice body. Oh, he does. Freshman from Simeon High School in Chicago. At 6'7", 230. Marquette with a lead at three. Eight minutes left, second half. Tyler Orlando has to have his hands ready to shoot that basketball when it's delivered to him. All right, pass picked off by Steve Taylor Jr. Here come the Golden Eagles. Blue for three. Quickly, UConn's boat ride dishes it, maybe it for the top. You got it. We said over and over all night long that that's the tempo UConn has to play with when they come up with the rebound or get a steal. Their opportunities to score in transition, not against that 2 3 zone. Nice execution in the open floor. Boat right to Napier. Napier is four for five from three point range. What a game here tonight. It's an eight nothing run all by Napier. See, now they're playing right in the UConn's hands. UConn wants them to take those long three-point shots. Inside, Olander. <laughs> Fouled, going up. He will shoot free throws when we return. Shabazz Napier. Napier. He's the guy who you want to have it in his hands to come up with big plays. He's been exceptional in the last two minutes of this game. Spotting up, bombing away from three. What a game tonight from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mike Corey, LaFonso Ellis back here inside the Bradley Center. We are tied at 57, thanks to this guy, Shabazz Napier. He seems to know the time to take over the basketball game. He's exceptional off the bounce. He hangs in the air to avoid defense, but this is where he really shows his mettle, the ability to recognize time and score, and when he needs to shoot the basketball. He's making great decisions on the floor this season, and he's been terrific in the second half of this game for the UConn Huskies. Not too bad in the first half either. 10 in the first, 11 in the second, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I thought early on mm -hmm. that Marquette's defense perhaps was frustrating him a little bit, you know, because there's not a lot of right. other options per right, se right, right now for UConn, but he's settled in nicely. I think what he does a great job of, and I think Ryan Boatwright as well, is when the game's not going well for them offensively, they never rush, and that shows the maturity of the sophomore and the junior. ESPN College Basketball is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at WatchESPN.com and with a Watch ESPN app. Do you have that Watch ESPN app? I do. I I'm do. trying to it's get awesome. it. I'm trying to get it right now. My, oh my son's God. a step ahead of me. He has the score center, and he oh, loves yeah, it. Yeah, they just updated the score center. Yeah. And the uh, Watch ESPN app is awesome. You get anything. You get games on replay like that all the way to the beginning of the season. That, that's pretty impressive. And all season long, so get it today. Watch ESPN on your smartphone. Check out every game this season. 58-57 now. UConn, their first lead since it was 6-3 at the 16-02 mark in the first half. Yeah. Well, there's been some battle battles going on inside tonight, how about it, huh? Tyler Olander stood him up with a little forearm shiver. You have to be careful, make the contact, and then escort the offensive player over there. A little too aggressive there by Tyler Olander. Third on Olander, the junior from Mansfield, Connecticut. We'll see if Gardner stays perfect at the free throw line tonight. Yes, he does. Nine for nine. He's just so tough. He pins you inside well. You can throw it into him and he can create offense for himself. And what he, he does, he's really good at drawing contact on the interior. And you put him on a line, makes his free throws as well. Difficult guy to guard in the post.
during my guy Marquette had a guy named Damon Keys. Same build. He used to give it to me in the post. I could not defend that guy. <laughs> Nolan was really unselfish with that. He was down in the post, and I would have liked to have seen him with two feet in the paint, throw it over the top, but he could see Shabazz moving into an open area. Nice delivery. 23 now for him. Good block inside, but Kelvin stays with it. And Marquette is back up one. Has also played stellar tonight for UConn. They regain the lead. Mayo. You cannot sleep for a second. Excellent dish by Philip Nolan. How about the little fellow with the hook shot to get it over the outstretched arms? And on dribble penetration, the guards have to sink down quickly to get in front of Gardner. He continues to be exceptional. Todd Mayo, terrific in transition. Body controlled the bump and the finish. Evans called for his third foul for UConn. converts on the three-point play. We've had four lead changes in the last five possessions, LaFonso. Both teams really getting after each other. The offensive focus has really increased. for UConn's Omar Calhoun. 76% free throw shooter. See if he can make these two under pressure. Coach Kevin Alley loves his versatility. He can play either the two guard or the three. Those are big free throws from a freshman yeah, yeah. now. <laughs> five, five minutes to go in the game. Yeah, one of two for the freshman from Brooklyn, New York. Gardner trying to slip by Wolf, and Wolf grabs it. Too much that time by Mayo. Now, there is Brad Autry, who is serving as the head coach for tonight mm -hmm. as Buzz Williams is suspended for one game. And now, how about not having him here? How much does that potentially affect Marquette? Thoughts on that? It, it, it can, but I still think that Junior Cadugan has been around enough, and he's the guy who captains that offense. So I don't expect it to be a factor in this game. Well, I'll tell you what's going to be a factor in this game is free throw shooting. We have 420 <laughs> to go, and both teams in the bonus. Both teams pretty solid from the free throw line, and so in these close games, this is where the hustle it comes down to the hustle points. Are you getting the 50-50 balls? Are you allowing second chance opportunities? And can you make your free throws? Both teams over 70%. Napier, and I asked Coach Kevin Ollie about this, and he had said that, you know, he I wondered if he was doing trying to do too much. And Coach mm -hmm. Ollie said, no, I actually want him to do a little bit more. <laughs> you know? He said because of his high IQ, sometimes he thinks he overthinks the game versus reading and reacting. 
tell you, UConn has a decision that they have to make now. Are they going to double Gardner down in the post when they're playing man-to-man, -man, when Enish Wolf is guarding him? Or are they going to let him play one-on-one? -on -one? And for Marquette, what are they going to do with the ball screens when Napier is handling or when Ryan Boatwright is handling? That could be the factor in this game. You got away with travel there, buddy. There's Wilson. Free throws for Marquette, a chance to regain the lead when we return. What a game tonight here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Happy New Year, everyone. UConn by a point with 3.53 to go. In case you're just joining us, Buzz Williams not coaching tonight for the Marquette Golden Eagles. They announced a dismissal of assistant coach Scott Monarch last August. Recruiting rules violation self-imposed here by Marquette as Buzz Williams sits out tonight's game and also a reduction in official recruiting visits. So that's the story. NCAA will no, no further sanctions coming from the NCAA. And here's the quote from Larry Williams, Marquette's athletic director. Quote, with each head coach, there is a specific obligation. You're responsible for the actions of your staff. We want you to own that, to own the responsibility, end quote. And that's why they decided for this game, the first Big East Conference game, that Buzz Williams will not coach. No contact for two straight days with the team. So there's Brad Autry, who is serving as the head coach for tonight for the Marquette Golden Eagles. And we are right down the stretch in this one, Lafonso Ellis, with a one-point ball game. A lot on the line here this evening. Tell you the game for Marquette, it's been 36 bench points they have with Devontae Gardner, number 54 in yellow, with 18 of those. And for UConn, it's been Ryan Boatwright and Shabazz Napier combining for 37 points. They've been outstanding the entire game. And Jamil Wilson for Marquette puts him back up a point, under four to go. Boatwright off balance. What a shot. <laughs> the sophomore from Aurora, Illinois, and he hits it to put UConn back in front. His ability to create space at six feet tall, exceptional. Again to the hole. This time rejected by Kadugan. Napier, a little too strong. And mark that ball off the hands of Omar Calhoun. Ryan Boatwright is a very difficult guard. How about the stop to in and out, then the bump to create space and over the top. Ladies and gentlemen, he's only six feet tall. And I think that's with high heels on. He's around 5'9". Ryan Boatwright, I, think, I tell you, I am impressed with him and Napier, the ability to recognize big game situations and come up with big buckets. Uh, he must have really uh, pulled one over to the folks in the media guide saying I'm six feet, you know, because that's what I saw. I said, yeah, that needs to know. You got a good three inches on that. Eight lead changes the last three and a half minutes of this one. UConn's upcoming schedule, a lot of games here on the ESPN networks, and DePaul, and then at Notre Dame, welcome to the Big East. Yeah, that's a heck of a schedule. <laughs> You're playing three of your five top 25 teams, and obviously Mike Bray's done a tremendous job in South Bend. They don't lose very, very many games on the home floor. Pittsburgh's been stout this year, and... How would you like to be sitting in the stands watching Ryan Boatwright and Russ oh, yeah. Smith go at it? Marquette does not lose many games on no. their home floor. They no. are riding a 16-game home court winning streak here tonight as you take a look at the leading scores for UConn and Napier leading the charge of 25. Uncanny how he can knock down situate what I call situational threes, big situational threes. UConn with a four-game winning streak for themselves. I think at some point, Devontae Gardner has to get a touch. Shot clock. Five. There he is. 
Wilson. And pulled home by Napier for UConn. Nice job defensively by UConn, forcing this Marquette team to shoot yet another jump shot, something that's not their strength. Boatwright pulls up over the floor. That's short. And partner, this is what it comes down to. Can you keep your guy in front of you to prevent help from taking place? Because you come help. Each of these guys on the floor are great at giving it up. Mayo. Dangerous pass from Wolf. Pull it out. Don't have anything here. Enish Wolf has been really good for UConn with his shot blocking. He's the only guy on UConn's team who can guard Gardner one-on-one. -on -one. It's a good matchup down low here in the late stages. Napier has been amazing tonight on the step back for the two. And that's the guy who you want to have the basketball in his hands. He usually makes great decisions. I thought that was a tough shot forced by Shabazz Napier with two guys leaning on him. Trent Lockett comes back in for Marquette. Possession arrow favors Marquette, by the way, in case we have a jump here with just over a minute to go in the contest. I'm surprised they took Mayo out of the basketball game because of how good he is offensively. Timeout Marquette, and you'll be able to watch Marquette a lot this season as well as they'll take on Georgetown on Saturday and then going to Pittsburgh and Seton Hall, Cincinnati, Providence. I mean, what about Marquette right now for them? You just don't get a break. Georgetown so long, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, at almost every position. But again, I like the toughness that this Marquette team has to go on the road and be able to get wins in tough environments. And to your point, 16-game winning streak on their home floor. But it's going to be an uphill battle for them. But I like the balance that they have offensively, being able to throw it in to get a couple buckets from Otule. You can throw it inside the Gardner to get buckets. Now can the question for them the remainder of the season, can they make an open jump shot? Fourth time in the last five years that Marquette has opened conference play on New Year's Day in the Big East at home. They are 3-0. Trying to keep that record perfect here tonight. I still think you got to give Gardner a touch down in the post area. He's out by three-point line right now with 10 to shoot. Wilson crosses over, pulls up. Wolf tipped to the Napier. Probably that's where your best players have to take that shot. Just under a six-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock here now for UConn. I'll tell you, partner, I wouldn't shoot the basketball until under under about ten because you want to give yourself a chance to get an offensive rebound. To rebound. Look for Bo White to let it get under ten before he goes and attacks. Marquette, you got to know where Shabazz is on the floor. He's the guy that can hurt you. UConn, boat right, fade away. Yeah, what a shot! <laughs> and it's a three-point lead with one second, two seconds to go. Kaduga for three to tie. your best players on each of your teams coming up with big baskets. We wondered how Buzz Williams not being here. I said that Junior Kadugan would set the table. He's been outstanding in this game. Not a great three-point shooter, but shows some big ones to be able to knock that one down. Contested three ball from 25 feet out. What a time for Marquette to hit their first three-pointer of the game. 
Yeah, partner, we've seen some good basketball tonight, buddy. I hope the rest of the year is going to be like this, huh? What a start. Happy New Year, everyone. Big East Conference matchup. UConn Marquette. 40 minutes, not enough. One for 15, the Golden Eagles from the three-point line. Here's when, the last play again. When you want the basketball in the hands of your best players, Ryan Boatwright looking to create. If you come and help, he would have kicked it over. And now you get it into the captain's hands, Junior Cadugan. Not a great shot for him, but he's a guy that makes big baskets and free throws and big plays. He's a big game playmaker, none bigger than that play there. Cadugan with 15 points for Marquette. Two amazing shots yeah, yeah. back to back. Well, both teams in the bonus situation here. And so, wow, I'm, we've seen an unbelievably high level of basketball from both these teams. What's Buzz Williams thinking right now for Marquette? <laughs> the head coach not able to coach in this ball game tonight. Well, they're, they're trying to figure out right now. Shabazz Napier, Ryan Boatwright, those are the guys that you have to pay attention to offensively. And here we go. Overtime is underway. Nice. What a backdoor play. It's a goal time. As Boltwright and Napier, the two best on the floor tonight for UConn, and now the referees will confer about this here. Yeah, that's a tough one, because when I heard it, it sounded like he hit the ball into the backboard, but I couldn't quite see it from my angle. Yeah, <laughs> I think the teams went the wrong way. Well, that's it. That's what they're talking about. Teams going the wrong way, so they may restart overtime wow. here. Carl Hess, Mike Stevens, and Mike Stewart are officials tonight. UConn 10 and 2, Marquette 9 and 3. Opening game of the Big East Conference play for both teams. UConn's won four in a row. Marquette has a 16-game home court winning streak that they would like to continue to extend. Here's the end of regulation. We talked about making the right plays at the right time. Ryan Boatwright's ability to be able to break you down and get his own shot. Junior Cadugan, not a three-point threat, but he tends to make big plays in big situations. Junior Cadugan has done a terrific job for them all evening long. I mean, how about the presence of mind of knowing how much time? You can see his eyes go to the clock to see how much time is up there. And he makes a little crossover move to freeze both right for a second to get him to drop his hands and was able to get it over the top. But what a, what two back to back, two back to back terrific plays by two awesome players. And we talked about to begin the game, the backcourts being the factor. 69 all in overtime as we get set to find out what the situation is here. The Dugan with the three pointer to tie it, the Senate to OT here from Marquette. This series, it's the ninth meeting of all time between these two teams here tonight. Marquette leads the series five to three. They've won two in a row. The last time UConn was in Milwaukee, they won by eight on January 25th, two years ago. Partner, I've just been told that, you know, a lot of people here were upset about that goaltending call, but if it's an illegal shot, it's not considered goaltending, and how they're going to handle it because they had them going the wrong direction. The possession arrow is what takes precedence. So if we get them going in the right direction, <laughs> the possession arrow is pointing towards Marquette. 
result of the play is Marquette basketball. All right, so no Bolton. Marquette basketball. And this is the end that they need to be shooting at. So they are in the front court right now and under underway here officially once again in overtime. Partner, can you guard your guy? Can you keep your defense from having to be broken down by giving help? It's going to be key in this overtime. Vander Blue has it. You gotta get it to Kadugan. I gotta get it to Blue to get a good shot off. Kadugan. Unbelievable. He's ignited the Bradley Center crowd here in Milwaukee. Napier for three. I was wondering when this game started if we were going to hit the 70s. Well, we are now. Indeed. The way it was defensively early on. I so said, you got to stay with Van der Blue and you got to stay with Kadugan. They've been making great decisions with the basketball. There's Blue right now. We're going to take it away. Napier on the steal. They talked about in practice today staying low on the dribble. Calhoun for three. Count that one, and UConn is back up a point. Dribble penetration by Napier of Boatwright has created some terrific open opportunities. The freshman Omar Calhoun knocking it down from the left corner. Timeout, Marquette. Calhoun just spotted up in that corner with a wide open three. Seven made by the Huskies, just one for Marquette, and that was the one that sent it to overtime. When you, at this point of the game, you want the basketball in the hands of your playmakers. Junior Kadugan making a big three to send it in the overtime. A big basket there in the gap. Dribble penetration for UConn. You have to come and lend some help. Great vision by Napier to find Omar Calhoun in the corner. 12th lead change tonight. Winning scores for Marquette, Gardner. Kadugan and Vander Blue, respectively. Balance inside play by Devontae Gardner. Junior Kadugan at the point, uh, making dishes, but also creating offense for himself. Vander Blue on the wing, getting it done. Napier with 25 for UConn. <laughs> Podright 16. Daniels with 11. Yeah, Daniels has been quiet here in the second half. It's been the Napier Boatwright show in the second half. If they're going to win this game on the road, those two guys are going to have to continue taking this game over. Three oh six in overtime. Each team with two timeouts and just back and forth here in this one. You just got to love the energy and intensity. We saw the shoot arounds here today. UConn and Marquette and Marquette was running their shoot around like it was a regular <laughs> practice in a game that was probably only two or three days away. And I was like, I hope they have enough energy here tonight. Well, that's not a question now. Well, really tests the discipline of your defense because the tendency is when the basketball goes through the hoop is to relax. But if you relax defensively against either of these teams, they are great at getting it out of bounds, getting inbounds and up the floor quickly, looking for early opportunities. Marquette, a team that's been to 11 straight postseasons and back-to-back -back sweet 16s. It's really remarkable what Buzz Williams has done with this Marquette Golden Eagle squad. Last back-to-back -back sweet 16s, impressive. How about since they've been in the Big East? The only program to advance to at least the quarterfinals of the Big East tournament the last seven years. The only team to do that. They won ten games in conference play every year except for one. They're six out of seven now in their eighth year in the Big East. Just, just amazing. They do it with toughness and grit. Defensive-minded first, but trying to get out and get easy points in transition. They love to break you down and get into that painted area. Ball in the hands of Kadugan. Nice job by Wolf, making it difficult for Gardner to catch it in the post. 
Well, and he causes a turnover, and it is a good job because he's got four fouls, LaFonso, so he's got to watch it. He, he does, but he's so valuable to this UConn team at 7-1. As I said earlier, he's the only one that can guard Devontae Gardner one-on-one -on -one down in the post. It keeps them from having to break down their defense, which allows you to guard your man to keep them from getting into the paint, which is where they want to be off the bounce. Wolf wants it. That's out. Now can you defend your guy? All right, three to shoot. Get up and goes and get the air ball shot clock violation. That was a terrific defensive possession by Marquette. They know that Boatwright wants to come off. If I'm UConn, I want to keep those big guys down so he's not double teamed at the top because he's been terrific both in regulation and the overtime and creating shots off the bounce for himself. Gardner comes up for a high screen. to Kadugan with 10 to shoot. Blue for three. Yeah. And it looks like he might have got hit as well. Two-point Marquette lead in overtime. Proud of their feet. Dribble penetration by Kadugan kicks it out to him. Challenge shot by Vander Blue. Vander Blue, much improved jump shooter, 37% from the three point line, rolled around every part of that rim. And the fans here wanted a charge, but I'm not sure he got completely square on both right. I thought that was a good call by the ref. Well, they wanted the push off, mm -hmm. and you saw the forearm. Kadugan called for the block. They want to open the back. You don't get that. Tie up. Possession arrow, UConn. Well, the fans wrestle for the last 15 seconds of this <laughs> one here. With what we've just seen. They felt they missed an over the back, a charge. Yeah. In their minds, nothing going well for Marquette right now. Your Marquette right now, you have to ID both Boatwright and Napier. Now the officials just told Brad Autry to step back. The acting head coach for tonight, number Buzz Williams, out with a suspension for just one game. Very intense over there. We're going with the 2 3 zone, and making it difficult for Napier and Boatwright to be able to break them down to get into the painted area or to get off a good shot. It's a good play call. Wolf sets a screen. Calhoun's shot is rejected by Trent Rocket. Beautiful defensive play by Rocket. Gardner. Oh, inside for Wilson. Napier quickly to the rack. Unbelievable. Remember we said you can't relax when the basketball goes through the net. Both teams are terrific at getting it up the floor quickly. That's what he had to do. He just gave him a two for one right there. Seven second differential in the shot clock. And he gave and he's now called for a foul. How about the reaction defensively? By Trent Lockett hanging in there, going up and getting that one. Omar Calhoun putting it right in his place. We talked about Gardner getting touches. He not only scores, but he's a great passer on the interior. When you make a basket, you cannot relax defensively because UConn's coming at you full throttle. Napier with a beautiful up and under in transition. It's going to be huge. Kadugan with one more. Could have made that one a two-possession game. Now make a miss is still a one-possession game. 
Kadugan has been brilliant from the free throw line this year, shooting 81%. Usually doesn't miss too many of those, especially in clutch time. One possession ball game, but the lead is now three for Marquette. 33 seconds left. Playing offense, defense here. They put number 12, Derek Wilson, in, subbing him in for Junior Kadugan. Derek Wilson is a terrific on ball defender, their best on ball defender. He'll take Shabazz Napier or he'll take Ryan Boatwright. Looks like he's taking Ryan Boatwright. UConn has timeouts, so they'll use one. Possession arrow favors Marquette. Napier for three of the time. of UConn, out of bounds. And now UConn takes a timeout. Whew, what a game. Imagine if that <laughs> went down. <laughs> uh, amazing. I still think at this time, if they can get a stop and come back, UConn, I think they're making a mistake bringing those bigs up to set that ball screen because Marquette is jumping because they're small guards anyway, and their bigs are jumping and double teaming. That's why Boatwright's not been able to get a good look at it, and that's why Shabazz Napier has not been. I'd rather them go 1-4 flat and let those two guys go to work one-on-one. -on -one. Here's the set for you with 18.6 left in overtime. Remember, we are here in overtime thanks to Junior Cadugan knocking down the only three-pointer of the ball game for Marquette at the end of regulation. Foul situation. Both teams in the bonus. And now with 18.6 left, it's go for a quick steal. If not, you got a foul. Uh, you, you certainly have to. Look for some full-court pressure here. As the inbounders making the pass, they'll try to go for the steal right away. But you can't afford any ticks to go off the clock, so you have to file if you can't come up with the steal. It's a good call, partner. But you have to watch the long pass if you're UConn. Don't give up anything easy. And the foul quickly by Giffy for UConn. And he is fouled out. Jamil Wilson, number zero in yellow, is a great free throw shooter at 84%. So he's the guy that Marquette wants to have the basketball in his hands in the last waning minutes of this game. If I done five points tonight for UConn. Kevin Ollie's Huskies hoping to win five in a row. Be a little bit tough here now, down three, 17.1. All comes down to the free throw line. We said it earlier because both teams were in the bonus for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with Marquette only 24 of 33 from the line, UConn 15 of 22. It's anybody's game. If you can just make one, he makes it a two possession game. Steps up and knocks down the first. after that fadeaway jumper by Boatwright near the end of regulation. Partner, we said the team that won the hustle phase of the game would be the victor. Ten offensive rebounds in the first half by Marquette. Now with that one, none bigger than that second possession right there. They have scrapped and clawed to come up with the victory here on their own floor. Six-point lead for Marquette. Here is fouled, but with just 7.6 to go, 
Well, what a valiant effort by him here tonight. Jamil Wilson is fouled out for Marquette with six points tonight. Really enjoyed watching Shabazz Napier. Watching Ryan Bullock right and the toughness that the grit that these guys play with in that game earlier against Michigan State that they won Ryan Bullock right twisted his ankle in the early part of that second half came back to steal hit some big big buckets realizing how much his team needed him and that's the toughness that these two guys bring to the table every single night. Napier can cut it to four. And he does with 7.6 left. Ties a career high with 29 points. And a quick foul. But a great start for UConn and Kevin Ollie at 10 and 2 to begin the year. Gets the contract extension yeah. for five years. Yeah. It's easy to see why. We talked to him earlier today. Great character guy. A lot of enthusiasm. Gets it, as you yeah. said. I think that's yeah. just the word. The preparation. The time he spent with his team and for his team to be as focused as they were on the road coming out with an excellent effort. A Marquette team coming up with the big extra possessions when they needed it. And that will do it. At the buzzer, Daniels and Marquette continues their home court winning streak. Now at 17 straight. And assistant coach Brad Autry in tonight for Buzz Williams, who served a one-game suspension and had to watch this one, but... He'll be happy, of course, with the result. 8-0 and at home this season. The start of Big East Conference play. And Marquette defeats UConn tonight in Milwaukee. That man, Junior Cadugan, three-pointer at the buzzer of regulation. The only three made by Marquette. Here's what happened. Faded away. To send it to overtime. Happy New Year. In a moment, we'll talk to Marquette assistant coach Brad Autry. And get his thoughts on what a finish this was here tonight to begin Big East Conference play. 17 in a row at home. Lafonso Ellis standing by. It's all you, man. Junior, you're missing your head coach tonight, and you and I talked about your focus and what it meant for you to come out here and lead your team. You're able to come up with big basket after big basket. How were you able to do that? It's just, a, this, this, it's just a sign of maturity. Like I said, I told you before the game, the guys came ready. Uh, it didn't matter if coach um, was missing. They came out with a sign of maturity and ready to win. And I respect that. And coach is going to respect it when he comes back. The big shot that you hit descended in, in regulation. How were you able to get airspace? I just sized up my, the player that was guarding me. And once I sized him up, I knew I had him. I just, I just shot it to make it. And, and it went in. Devontae Gardner continues to be huge for you guys down in the post. What does this play mean to your ball club? Devontae, you know, people might think he's lazy. People might not might think he not works hard, but he works hard, man, and he's willing to play. He's just quiet by nature, you know. 
And, you know, he, he's a great guy, and he's willing to win, and he was, came out ready to play. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And we'll go back to Alfonso Ellis, now standing by with assistant coach Brad Autry. Coach Autry, you were concerned about their speed uh, against your strength. How were you guys able to I mean, neutralize? <laughs> <that. laughs> Absolutely. How, how, how were you guys able to slow them down at times? Well, I tell you what. One of the things we tried to do was with our, our bigger guys, we tried to shadow the ball a little bit and just try to corral them. Our whole thing was. If we turn it into a track meet, and we talked about that earlier, we're not going to keep up with them. But we have to contain, 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 make them take the toughest shot we can. And I thought we did, for the most part, did a good job with that. They got some easy looks in transition, which we have to fix, but really proud of our guys. You're missing your head coach in Buzz Williams, and you needed some players to step up for you tonight. Who do you think was the most impactful player for you guys tonight? Well, I, without taking a hard look at the stat sheet, I thought that the way we started the game collectively, and I'm not bailing out on that question, I thought every guy, I just talked to Steve Taylor, and I said, Steve, I know you want to play 40 minutes, but dude, the minutes you gave us were huge, huge. And that's what everybody has to understand, whatever minutes you get, you buy in, you do whatever you can. So to say one guy or two guys, I, I don't know. I mean, Junior made a big shot, but we had dudes diving all over the floor. We had all kinds of stuff that has made us what we are, and I'm very, very proud of them. Once Junior Cadugan was able to hit the three to tie it up to send it in overtime, what was your strategy in overtime? Did it change from regulation? No, I, I wanted to continue, our guys to continue to attack. I didn't want them to settle. We finally got a three to go, and uh, I thought they might get a little happy about that and just decide we're going to be jump shooters, and Van banked one in. But I've told our guys all week, and we tell our guys all the time, Coach does, we do, you have to earn the right to make shots. Diving on the floor, taking a charge, getting a big rebound, whatever that is, you, you have to earn the right to make those shots. And so I don't think our strategy changed. I wanted to get the ball inside, and we didn't do a great job of that, but I thought our guards kept the ball moving and on an, in an attack mode, and that's what we wanted to do. And finally, Coach, with the lineup that had the teams going the wrong way, what was your thought doing that? Well, that was a master plan I had. I said, line up on the wrong side. And when they shoot it, goaltend it. That'll be our basket. <laughs> so it didn't work out that way, but I, I didn't. To be honest with you, I didn't notice, and Mike Broker was yelling behind. I was like, what are you talking? So it was just mass confusion, but we got it straight, so we'll take it. Gritty win for your team. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Very proud of you. Back to Thank you. you. All right, thanks very much, Alfonso and Marquette with the win tonight, 82 to 76, the final over UConn in overtime. Great start to the new year for them, that's for sure. And a great start to Big East Conference play as well. It should be a fun season and looking forward to it very much. Hope you enjoyed it out there. Thanks for tuning in, 82 76, the final. Coming up next, the road to the BCS National Championship game for Alfonso Ellis and our entire crew. Mike Corey, so long from Milwaukee. Happy New Year, everybody.